What's cracking, Bunny Bullers? My name is Bunny Tears, expressing myself today with a breakdown of the reveal trailer for Mob of the Dead, the new zombies mode, map, game, whatever you want to call it. That's what I'm doing. Now, the way that I've done this today is I've actually slowed down all the footage, the gameplay footage that I think I have something to say about that might be revealing a few things to us. And then I've left everything else the same, so you can still listen to all of the developers talking about the actual map, their ideas behind it, things like that. But there will also be slowed down parts of gameplay which I will talk over myself. So you get the best of both worlds. I hope it does help you guys out, because I found out a lot about this zombies just by looking and breaking down this trailer. It was a challenge to try and capture something as iconic as Alcatraz. You know about this. This is arguably the most famous prison in the world. And now you're in it. Just the space, you know, the physicality of it, because it's quite claustrophobic. When modern day prisons are designed, they really consider not intimidating people or making the spaces, you know, as, as least stressful as possible. Well, Alcatraz didn't suffer from those restrictions. They did the research, they went out, studied Alcatraz, not just from books or internet. They were actually there to feel the environment, so it really sets a mood that gets you a little spooked. Well, we kind of started with the base layout of Alcatraz. The entire island we ended up roughing out uh, in kind of a white box form. Now, I don't know about you guys, but looking at this image tells me that not only are we going to be playing inside the prison, we're going to be playing outside the prison as well. There are walkways you can see, there's obviously the docks that they're showing right now, and now this pretty much means that the playable area is tripled, because the entire island could be involved rather than just the prison itself. This is extremely exciting, because the bigger the better in my opinion. It's zombies, bitch. What else are you going to do? This is that the public doesn't necessarily get to go into. Now the thing I noticed about this clip is that the bottom right of the screen is very different to what we're used to, where it shows the amount of ammo you have, where it shows your grenades, things like that. It's quite different to what we've seen in past zombies. Now I'm not sure if this is going to be in the final product or if this is just a beta version or something like that, but also there's a small square blue symbol just there with like shocks going into it, and you'll find out later exactly what that is. Looking for, and this is a really good opportunity to really tell something special. Watch this carefully. The nuke drop gets pulled towards the player. At first I thought it was a perk or something that did this, but you can see, if you watch it back again, there's something like a knife in the perk drop, which means you're able to pull the perk towards you rather than having to run towards it. Now in this next clip, the thing that caught my attention was there's that little blue symbol again. You can see it moving across the bottom of the screen and now up to the left of the screen as well. Now this kind of tells me that whatever this blue thing is, which we will find out by the end by the way, whatever this blue thing is, at first I thought maybe you had to pick up this blue thing from a certain area on the map and that's what that symbol was, but no, that's not what it is. It's actually just showing the location of the player that is using that blue thing. What is it? Well, you'll find out at a future point in the video. Also, you get to see the players using a lift, taking them from one area of the map to the other. We've seen it before, but it's good to see again. This time around, okay. I feel like it's been identified that there are these side missions that you're going to go out and try to accomplish. Now, there is a lot of information here on this piece of paper. First things first, they have the entire story mode of this new Zombies written right there. Step one, find the Warden's Key. Step two, get the plane parts. Step three, build a plane on the roof. Step four, get the hell off the island. There's also that symbol, that blue symbol we've seen, and it's labeled as Afterlife. Now... You're going to see later on in this trailer as well what exactly Afterlife is. There's also a few codes on this piece of paper. I've been able to decipher a few of them. The one at the bottom right, which is a little grid thing, says Mob of the Dead 1, 2, 3, 4. Then there's a lot of F, X's, D's, X's, and G's up in the top right. I haven't been able to decipher that. However, what this is basically telling me is that that blue symbol is Afterlife, which means that Afterlife, the power itself, runs out. You have to use it to get through certain doors to certain places, and here you actually see the plane construction, what you need to make that plane. All of it's right there, so if you pause the video, you can have a better look at it. It also says a cat has nine lives, basically also solidifying the fact that we're able to go into the afterlife. Um, and then we can use our powers, which is also shown there, to turn certain switches on or do certain things or help certain players that you wouldn't be able to do while you were alive. So we'll see a bit more of that in a couple of seconds. Something new for the first time, we have actually contextual music that goes off. So that's the that's a first for zombies. Um, and it's all based around this horror thriller aspect. Every location will have a specific stinger that you hear when you find it, when you discover it, when you start unraveling the story, we, we start building on the music that you're hearing. And it's really... 
Now, I had a lengthy discussion with someone about this next image. It basically has four electric chairs, and it says no one escapes alive. Now, keeping in mind the fact that the entire purpose of this zombies is to build a plane and escape from the roof, that would suggest that it's not possible. However, the way that I looked at it was that it says no one escapes alive. Now, with the implementation of this new afterlife ability, I think what it's trying to say is if you don't use that ability, you don't escape. That's not the most exciting thing about this new zombies, though. It's nothing to do with the story. However, the people they've chosen to voice act and in fact act in general as the playable characters are huge Hollywood actors. Huge! This is a step in the right direction for gaming in general. You can see here. On the left is Finn O'Leary, played by Michael Madsen, who was in Reservoir Dogs. Then to his right, with the ray gun, is Arthur Arlington, also known as the Weasel, who's played by Joe Pantoliano from The Matrix. Then on his right, with the Tommy gun, is Salvador Sal de Luca, played by Chaz Palminteri, who was in The Usual Suspects. And then on the far right, just coming into screen now, is Billy Handsome, played by Ray Liotta, who was in Goodfellas. You can't get bigger names than these. This is ridiculous. I'm so excited to see where gaming can go from here just because of this one zombies map. And that kind of guy, you know, we wanted the frantic nature, so he plays a character called uh, Billy Handsome, who's this kind of psychopath. Now, I've slowed down this next clip for two reasons. First of all, he's using an AK-47. I love AK-47s. That's going to be in New Zombies. Thank you very much. Secondly, the zombie that just got his head blown off has spikes coming out of his entire body. Now, I'm not sure if this is a new type of zombie with new abilities, or it's just a visual thing that they've put into this new map, but either way, it's pretty exciting, and you see these guys throughout the entire trailer. Chaz Palminteri, he plays a guy called Sal. Now, in this next image with Sal, you can see in the bottom right of the screen one of the Hellhounds. Now, when I first saw this, I thought, oh shit, Hellhounds are back, this is going to be crazy, but it gets a bit more confusing a bit later on in the trailer, as you'll see. Michael Madsen playing Finn O'Leary. Now, in this image with Finn O'Leary and the weasel in the background as well, you'll notice the zombies again, one crawling towards Finn, one walking, both with spikes coming out of their body again, in what looks like some kind of surgery room with codes on the walls, just like on the paper. Hopefully we'll be able to crack those. Not sure if you will be able to, though. So could these be a new type of zombie? We're not too sure. But not only that, but look at this guy. That is crazy. The guy's covered in barbed wire. He's got some kind of metal mask on. Again, the exact same reason this slowed down is because this could be a new type of zombie with new abilities. Because they are bringing new zombies into this, as you'll see in a second. Or is it just another visual upgrade? And then we had Joe Pantoliano, and he plays... Now, in this still image, again, with the weasel there... If you look in the background, look very closely, you'll see those zombies in the background again have spikes coming out of them, and that zombie on the left of the screen again has barbed wire going around his body. I ask the question again, is this a new type of zombie with new abilities? Are either of them a new type of zombie, or is it just visual upgrades? Also, if you look behind the weasel, just above his right arm, you see the familiar blue glow of a weapon on the wall. So, although it was pretty much expected there were going to be weapons on the walls that you could buy, at least now it's confirmed. They bring a quality and a subtlety and time. Now, there are two points of interest in this next still image. One is the area that Weasel is in. It looks like a basement of some kind. It does not look the same as the prison cell area that we saw before. Now, we have seen an image that looked like this at the beginning of the trailer, so this must be a separate area of the map. Now, on the bottom right is the crawling zombie. You get to see those spikes coming out of his body up close. Now, the thing that makes me think this is more than a visual upgrade is if you had a zombies map in an insane asylum, they'd all be wearing those insane asylum gowns. It's very obvious, it's very clear, but where would these spikes come from in Alcatraz? It's not obvious, it's not clear, so there has to be more to it. Now, these next few clips, there's a couple of things. First of all, here's one of the players using a Tommy gun, but more importantly in this image, look at the top left. Look at that top left. What does that symbol look like to you? To me, that looks like a key. Now, what did the first step say we had to do? Find the Warden's Key. So that is kind of confirming that plan of action. Also, if you look in this next clip, look at the top left again. The symbol has changed. I'm not sure what that is, but it could be part of the plane or something. 
Um, and then in this actual next area, you get to see what I think is one of the usable characters in the background in Afterlife mode, which is what that blue symbol is, because he's just sitting there, he's not fighting, no zombies are attacking him. Um, and then in this, you get to see again the Hellhound in the background in the exact same place he was in before, not chasing the player or anything, and you only see his head before he disappears. There is some explaining to be done. You get to also see one of these traps. Now, there's a couple of traps actually spread out through the map. You get to see this new gun, which is the Blundergat. I think it's called the Blundergat. This is the upgraded version, and that's the new type of zombie as well. This is a close-up. Look, here's the Hellhound with his head sticking out of the wall, eating a zombie. Now, that's technically doing you a favor, isn't it? That's something to think about. This Hellhound is technically doing you a favor. In the afterlife mode. Now, I heard a few YouTubers saying that the only way to go into afterlife mode was to die. That is not true at all. The reasons for that is, yeah, it could work in multiplayer where you just respawn next round after you die, but in solo, once you die, the game is over. There's no one else to save you. That's it. Game over. Finished. And as we've already established, there are certain things you can't do unless you're in afterlife mode. So you're trying to tell me that they're going to take away all of those other things you can do from the solo players? That doesn't make any sense. But also in this clip, you can see the playable characters sitting down with those blue symbols over their head, telling me they are alive and in afterlife mode. I'm gonna try to solve the, the mystery from the second you start. Afterlife to me brings a new element, like a new puzzle element. Now, this next clip is someone just going into afterlife mode. You can see that blue symbol at the bottom again that we've seen throughout this entire reveal trailer. And that basically tells you how much time you have left in this mode. It drains from right to left, from blue to black. And when it runs out, you run out of time in afterlife mode. In this room is the playable character sitting on the floor, not dead, not being attacked by zombies, but in afterlife mode. And you can actually kill people while in afterlife mode without being killed by zombies yourself. You see clues throughout the... Now here's another clip of the afterlife mode. There is a doorway that this player has found that does not exist outside of afterlife mode. Also, there is a device inside that allows him to turn on at least part of the electricity of the map. Now this shows that the message we saw earlier, no one escapes alive, does in fact mean no one can escape without going into afterlife mode at least at one point. Puzzle going on here that I need to be in the afterlife the acid trap which drops acid on top of zombies as they walk through this corridor also look at the gun it looks upgraded with a bunch of symbols on it with like pyramids and eyes i don't want to say too much but it looks familiar to me and then also we get to see this second trap you can also see another one of those electrical points in the left hand side in that caged area as he moves forward you'll get to see a better look at that but this trap i think it's called the fan trap and basically two rotating sharp edged fans come out from both sides of the doorway basically killing any zombie that tries to walk through the door to get to you. So, we've seen things like this before, especially in doorways, but I'm glad to see it again. Before it turned into a penitentiary. And so we had this kind of backstory, the idea that the warden... Now, this next image is of the Blundergat. It's supposed to be a mix between a blunderbuss and a Gatling gun, which sounds absolutely insane. I'm not 100% sure how it works because it looks like a normal shotgun. Uh, you'll notice as the player reloads here, only one bullet goes in, despite all of those barrels. And yeah, it does blow everyone to pieces, but I don't see where the Gatling gun comes into it. It just looks like a quadruple barrel shotgun. Um, you also get to see kind of an upgraded version in the next clip, which is a little bit more interesting. So let's go on to that. The combination between a, a blunderbuss and a, and a Gatling gun. And possibly there might be a way of upgrading it to a more uh, fantastical weapon that the, the players may so Packer punches back. Here is the upgraded Blundergat. There are three bullets in the chamber rather than the one that we saw earlier. But pay attention. That zombie is stuck with little green things and the wall behind them is stuck. Boom. So basically the Blundergat upgraded is like firing a machine gun that shoots sticky grenades. But with the accuracy of a shotgun. Could be a very, very powerful weapon. But could also be a weapon that you kill yourself a lot with. It sounds pretty risky to me. One main zombie, <laughs> one big zombie. Now, in this clip, you get to see the big zombie he just mentioned. It basically looks like a zombie in a juggernaut suit that's near impossible to kill, just runs at you, smacks a shell at you, but not only you, but also the perk machines as well. You're going to see in this next clip the player do something confusing. He goes up to the machine. He doesn't buy a speed color, but something happens to the machine. I don't know if it's because of the presence of this zombie, but then the zombie goes up and punches it. And fire appears at the bottom of the machine. Now, I'm not sure if the player just did something to the machine that defended it from this big zombie. And that's why the speed color is still lit up and everything. 
Or if the player didn't do that to the machine, the zombie did it, and then the zombie went up and punched it, and that fire at the bottom means it's broken, which means that the player now has to repair it. I'm not 100% sure what just happened. However, clearly something happened. Now watch this. As he kills the large zombie, it explodes. It's clearly some kind of fire zombie, just like those acid zombies we used to have, where you kill them and they blow up acid. This one blows up fire, so that's another thing to watch out for. It's a fun challenge. It keeps things moving forward. In terms of perks... Now, with the new zombies comes a new perk. Now, it does say five cents on the front of the machine, but don't believe that shit. It's going to cost you two Gs. It's called Electric Cherry. The idea behind this perk is that every time you reload after drinking the Electric Cherry drink, a shock charge comes from your insides. So you're going you're gonna to see it here. As this player reloads his gun, he just seems to shock everything around him. This is going to be very, very helpful because reloading is one of those times when you get the shit smacked out you by a horde of zombies. There is so much to experience in this map. Now, look closely. Here in this video is an actual video clip of a zombie with the spikes coming out of him. He didn't do anything special. Could be just a visual upgrade. This is the cell block area. This area is completely different. This isn't a basement, isn't a cell block area, but it does look like the area that might have the acid trap in it. Also, the weapon is upgraded, which confirms there's going to be Pack-a-Punch again. So, it's all looking pretty exciting so far. I think this area could be very good to rape train. But there's also this layer of things that we aren't exactly exposing upgraded. to the players right <laughs> off the bat, and will need to be discovered. Now, here's a few clips that show us a few things. First off, here's the Hellhound with his head through the wall again. Not attacking the player, but you're about to see him eat another zombie. See, he's eating another zombie. He's doing the player a favor. I don't know if you can actually use this Hellhound to your advantage, or it's just random, but it's good to see. Here are the Riot Shields and the Blundergat. Riot Shields are made up of a trolley, one of the prison cell doors, and something else as well. And... As it was in the previous maps, once you hit a zombie with a right shield, they just go flying, because that's pretty realistic. Um, the new gun actually looks pretty good, but it's going to be very dangerous when upgraded. This is afterlife mode again. If you look at the symbol at the bottom, you can see it's slowly draining. And I can't stress enough, those players are not dead. They are sitting down. So I'd say once you go in afterlife mode, you take a seat, your soul leaves your body, zombies stop attacking you, and you get to do all of this amazing shit. This area looks like a corridor. At first I thought it was a meat fridge, but it's not because there's actually a radiator on the side there. But it looks like a corridor just where loads of dead bodies are. Historical elements and these fantastic actors all seem to be uh, with peace with each other in this kind of same world. So it's, it's magical and our team is incredibly excited by it. So that's it guys, that's all they've given us for now with the reveal trailer. We learnt a lot, it looks extremely exciting. I'll put a couple of links in the description for more info on weapons and characters and things like that. And if I'd missed anything, feel free to hit it up in the comment section and let everyone else know. God bless! Alright then guys, if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button below, it helps me out hugely. You can also subscribe to become one of the bunny boilers and keep up to date on my future videos. If you're still here, you might as well, it's completely free. Also, you can follow me on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash bunny tears online, or twitter.com forward slash it's bunny tears. Links are in the description. I love you all, you have huge penises, but they get bigger if you subscribe, that's actually a scientific fact. Apart from that, bunny up bitches! <laughs>